meet gives us an option that we can also have a transcription. So if you make a summary for yourself, that would be really good. You see, if you say, I love you to your honey, So one Mike sent me a message. No, I, I hide their name. So two characters I'm using, Mike and Michelle. So Mike wrote me and sent me the message. You know, what's the problem if I say love you? I said there is no problem. Thought has no problem. But when a particular thought is used in a situation, in a relationship with the people, that makes the difference. So if you say to your honey, I love you, that makes a sense. And your honey is beside you, and you tell your neighbor, I love you. The statement is the same. Thought is the same. <laughs> but if you say to your neighbor, I love you, what will happen? So the situation, all thought comes from that consciousness. So if we use that thought, so thought definitely comes to my mind, but I can choose the situation, relations, people, and the time, where to use. No thought is good and bad. Any thought. So thought becomes good and bad because of the situation, relations, event, when I use it. So when I lose awareness, how come I lose my awareness? Because I'm attached. Now see, I'm attached or I may be obsessed or I may have an intense craving for something and I start using those thoughts which does not make a sense in a particular situation and that causes the problem in our life. Are you getting it? So in order to, thought may come, any kind of a thought may come. The same thing, I love you. If you say in a country where LGBTQ is banned to the same sex, that will create a problem. And where it is legal. <laughs> so you see, the same thought is there. I love you, I care you. But where you use is your choice. And if the choice is used with a right and proper attitude in the mind, you are never stressed. Do you see that? We don't want to use it. We use it where the situation is adverse, where we should not have used. It causes the trouble to our life. The thought with a particular attitude, and then it is expressed in behavior and action that causes a lot of problem. Ultimately, it boils down to the impurity of the mind. What is the goal of life is the first question we have been discussing. Goal of life until with the right and proper attitude in the mind, the goal of life is clear in my life. 50% of the problems are gone. So we don't cultivate the attitude. We go by an app. Oh, after what, what I have said, you know, I have not said anything wrong. I told you no thought is good and bad. Remember this. where you use it, how you use it. Oh, I love you. Don't you understand? So that that demands an attitude. <laughs> then you, the other guy says, hell with you, you love me. 
I hate you. You see how the Eastern wisdom takes care of each and every, not only the thought, but an attitude in the mind. Attitude in the mind. And that attitude should be corrected, should be known before I speak, before I express that into an action. So now take the first question. What exactly is the goal of the life? My attitude pulls me, makes me awfully busy running after the wealth or running after all kinds of the pleasure in the world. That is an attitude in the mind. If the attitude does not change, you will not be able to find out what is the goal of life. Forget about it. You continue attending the lesson. Am I helping myself? No. But I have to speak the truth. So why we are not changing? Because that attitude in the mind remains craving for peace and happiness outside in the world. And then I say, I have understood it intellectually, but I have a lot of confusion. So you created a confusion by yourself. I did not confuse you. Nobody confuses you. You have a choice. And that attitude, which comes so-called habitually, so-called spontaneously. No, no, just I, I didn't mean to be angry, but anger just came out spontaneously. No, that spontaneously came from the attitude. And the attitude recalls the trigger, the past impression, your your basic motivation inside of living the life. And that is why we are not changing. Are you getting it? So if you do not change our attitude, and that attitude can be changed by taking a conscious decision, making a choice. Who makes the choice? The intellect. The goal of life is to evolve, to rise in consciousness, to awaken to the real self, whether we know it or not, but that is the only goal of life. Others are means, earning, making an effort, earning money, going for different kind of pleasure. They are just the means in our life. They have nothing to do with the goal of life. And that is, that is so master, if the person does not understand, who is not a seeker, so the master says, follow the second question, find out the answer. If you are confused, what is the common desire of all the human beings, all the living beings? Forget about human beings. What is the common desire? Common desire. Common desire. I have told you, you just you sit down every day at least for 10, 15 minutes. What is the common desire of a mosquito, an elephant, and a tiger, even the plant? And all the human beings, my honey, my near and dear ones, we want to be in peace and happiness. It proves that I also, my common desire is peace and happiness. How simple it is. No, it is very complex. You know, my honey doesn't listen to me. This is my attitude. I have to change that attitude. I have to make a choice. My honey, I'm living in that relationship, so I should express peace and happiness, come what may. But my attitude? <laughs> but my attitude? Are you getting it? Was my attitude? And that is why we say, I have been very kind to my honey, but my honey doesn't listen to me. Now the time has come to divorce. Where you will go after divorce? Where? Tell me, where? First time you have chosen a wrong option, and the second option will always be wrong. So you will remarry to be happy? So attitude is, is the same. The, your, your head will go with you, with the second person also, because my attitude has not changed. Are you getting it? So some people take a different route. Oh, now I have seen marriage, you know, for example, any relationship, but I'm talking about 
marriage is just an example. I will not marry, so you will be more frustrated now. I have learned a very good lesson that now I, that too, you, then you will suffer from loneliness. You're still expecting wife attitude. I did not change myself. I want to change. I want the world should change for me. This is not going to happen. This has never happened. This will never. I will talk about that because if, have that, if we have that attitude, I'm a consumer of the world. And then what is going to happen? The world will squeeze you. will cause an extreme stress, suffering, duality, anxiety, depression. All the negativity will enter into you. Attitude. Second question. Third question. Third question, what is the end of the suffering and the part? Again, the master is focused on the same question. You see, indirectly, he's focused on the same question. What exactly is the end of the suffering and permanent, permanent happiness? Let me change my attitude and start evolving myself, rise in consciousness. So when you rise in consciousness, behind that attitude, those past impressions, your past experiences, you learn from it, you change that. When you change that, your attitude also changes. And ultimately, we, re we recognize what we recognize. What is the end of the suffering in Eastern wisdom? End of suffering in Eastern wisdom means I recognize I have a cognitive ability that I'm not worthy of suffering. There is nothing like suffering exists. Suffering exists because of my attitude, and suffering do not exist because of my attitude. My neighbor has such a big house. I don't have this thought. What this thought represents? The jealousy. Who created the jealousy? This thought. Attitude. What should be the attitude? At least the where the house that I'm living be is protecting me from the cold and the heat and protecting me from the enemies and adversaries. This is the best house I'm living in. Are you getting it? Say yes. Even if you do not understand, you can listen to it again. So simple. But it is not so simple. My mind is hijacked by that attitude coming from that past impression from the society. We have a heavy conditioning, cultural conditioning, social conditioning, conditioned by the parents. And we live with those thoughts. And that defines my attitude. Think. We have to think. Master, Our master says, never believe. I told you hundreds of times, no need to believe, but contemplate and reflect. My neighbor's house is big. Hold on, mind, let me think it over. What I have to do with it? Is the house I'm living in is not protecting me? Yes. Is not taking care of me? Yes. This is the best house I should be living in. Finished. But we extend that thought. From one thought to the second thought, you see what happens to the second thought? Neighbor says, hi. You say, OK, hi, how are you? Because my attitude is different. I'm already jealous. You see? See, the behavior is expressed. Uh, she thinks he is so beautiful, you know. Unnecessary. Unnecessary, unwanted. So we entertain these thoughts. Because of that attitude, I have an attitude of jealousy, I have an attitude of sorrow, I have an attitude of suffering, I have an attitude of getting into anxiety. That is why I'm into anxiety. 
Otherwise, I'm not worthy of suffering at all. You see, again, what is the end of the suffering? We recognize we are not worthy of suffering. There is a cognitive ability, there is a knowledge, there is an awareness. What happens? That then we discover the real self, which is of the nature of permanent happiness. That is the third question we have been discussing about. Fourth question, what brings that? So what exactly is the... What brings that 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 end of suffering and permanent happiness? So the word is used as nirvana, kavalya, salvation, realization, awakening. You can name anything. Word does not make a difference if you really understand it. What brings that self-knowledge? Knowing my true nature. My nature, essential nature, is not being jealous, not being hated, not disliking, not liking. Huh? So what happens? Self-knowledge. The self is not of the nature of jealousy, hatred, duality, anxiety. It is superimposed on me because I am responsible for it. So again, you see, the one question is enough. But the master has been kind enough. He explains what is going on in my mind, what attitude by which I live my life, I think, I speak, and I act in my life. So one another mic sent me a message that, oh, you have been here for five years. Are you looking for a new house? I said, I'm knowledgeless, homeless, and jobless. So he has been learning from me for the last six months, but his ego was so strong. What he responded? Mike responded to me, I have four and five houses, but still I'm homeless, jobless, and knowledgeless. Are you making a joke of these principles? My ego returns. <laughs> that attitude returns in a very polite way. I have five or six houses, but I am knowledgeless, homeless. I am also knowledgeless, homeless. We don't want to shift our attitude. I don't say anything. I, I, I live my life, you know, you also live your life. I pass on the wisdom. If you change, if you change, it will bring a tremendous. It will bring a transformation in our life. The fifth question is a repetition. What exactly is the self knowledge? Fifth question. What is self knowledge? So we have answered the fourth question. Nirvana is nothing but self knowledge. So what is self knowledge? Knowing that I am of the nature of real self. I am the peace and happiness. I'm not in peace, but I am peace consciousness. I am love consciousness. I am happiness consciousness. Consciousness is common. So once we are clear and answer the five questions, and we start finding the changes in our attitude. What that attitude? How the attitude going going to change? I hold back all my thoughts, and I examine whether this thought has come because I chose it, I made a right choice, or it has come spontaneously. It is forcing me. It is pushing me to express that in my behavior that is going to cause you the stress and the suffering. When you make a choice, you have an urge to clear your bowels, you know you have to go to the restroom and clear it. The thought comes to an end. But if the no thought comes to an end, it remains incomplete, 
it continues its journey in your mind. You see, when we hate someone, that hatred follows me. The hatred chases me. Then you say, no, I have a disturbed sleep. You don't go to the cause of disturbed sleep, but you see, I have a disturbed sleep. So take medication, you know. <laughs> Nothing is going to happen. Doctor also says, no, you take these medication. You are repeating those medication after a few weeks. Uh, doctor says, no, I have to give you a stronger medication. Increase the dose. And it is such a simple issue. Attitude. Attitude. That I'm talking about that attitude, not what is explained in modern psychology. Understand it. Think it over again and again. What I'm going to say and speak to someone, how I'm going to express my feeling and emotion. You see, I have seen, you know, so-called the people say soulmate and love affairs, uh, modern love affairs. You have seen in films also, uh, the actor or the actresses uh, so-called become shy, it becomes difficult to say, to express that I love you. Why it becomes so difficult? Because of my attitude of attachment. It has nothing to do with the love. So the entire Eastern wisdom, it, 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 it brings a total transformation. It goes to the cause of it. And then comes the sixth question, how many types of self-knowledge? So here the master is putting a doubt in you. You know, you, otherwise what will happen? Your intellect says, I know. Self-knowledge means I know the real self. The master says, don't be fooled by the mind. It is just the beginning of a journey. That self-knowledge is of two types, indirect self-knowledge and direct self-knowledge. Where is indirect self-knowledge? That you learn and you listen and learn from the teacher. You are real self. You intellectually understand. And what is direct self-knowledge? You declare yourself that you are the real self. Did you understand the difference between the two? You experience that I am the real self, you declare. You don't frown, you're always smiling now. You're always in peace. You have no issue of anxiety, duality, and a conflict. In direct self-knowledge, you listen, you the teacher passes on the knowledge the pastor teacher passes on the knowledge you understand it clearly you have a conviction clarity and conviction are the two elements present in your intellect that pushes the mind not to change your attitude but sticking on it then only you can say i have received indirect self-knowledge from the teacher Otherwise, otherwise you will blame and complain the teacher. You have told me, I understand it intellectually, but it is not happening. You are not a seeker. <laughs> you are not a seeker. You do not understand. There is no clarity. And still you claim that you have intellectually understood, but still you have not understood. So the master answers in the seventh question, who gets the indirect knowledge of the real self? Simple answer. If you are a seeker, you will get the indirect self-knowledge from the teacher. And the seeker alone succeeds in this path. If you are not a seeker, you listen to it, you enjoy it. You will say, this weird guy is very good. He talks always positive things. You will stretch your intellect in other direction. What is that in the other direction? If you like what I guide you, what I'm talking to you, you will say, no, he's talking about positive intelligence i'm not talking of positive intelligence i'm talking of fundamental change in you that's a big difference between modern psychology and eastern wisdom 
then you pass on the comments on the teacher you see that you know uh, he talks very good you know i appreciate his talking you should appreciate when you change that would be a right appreciation of the teacher <laughs> otherwise it's a lip service <laughs> Even after listening to these talks, not many people uh, appreciate. So you see there is a difference. No, so you see the, uh, how the questions are related? How many types of self-knowledge? There is an indirect self-knowledge, and there is a direct self-knowledge. You have seen the difference. Direct self-knowledge means I possess, I know that knowledge. I'm the real self, I declare. You have realized that is the state of awakening. That is the state of, uh, you can say, salvation, realization, many words. We will make a differentiation at a later stage, what these words mean, actually. And indirect self-knowledge. So now we see the seventh question is, who gets the indirect knowledge of the real self? So there are two questions involved. First is, who gets the indirect knowledge of the real self? And what is indirect self-knowledge? Two questions. Simple answer. What is the goal of life? That is the answer. I am the real self. And who gets the indirect knowledge? Who is prepared? Who is committed? Who is sincere? Who wants to change his attitude or her attitude? Who has a clarity and a conviction? that yes, there is a real self, an entity in me, I have to find it. So there are many sub-questions also comes along with it. What are the sub-questions comes with it? A seeker listens, non-seeker hears. There's a difference between hearing and the see, uh, listening. <laughs> hearing. Hearing is casual. Oh, do you want a cup of tea? It's a casual. Thank you. No. So when the hearing is casual, it does not go deep inside. That knowledge you hear here, it does not descend down to your heart. That is hearing. Listening, uh, you are committed, you contemplate and reflect, so much so that knowledge descends down to the heart. What happens to the heart means the mind. Mind says, I have to change myself. No, I have to change. I have to change myself. Enough is enough. So now you have an answer why we are not changing and how we can change. You see how deeper these questions and how indirect knowledge of the real self takes place. We will talk about it. That is the eighth question. What happens by the indirect self-knowledge? Yes, we have to understand when indirect knowledge completes or ends. So we have to answer all these questions. There's a clarity. Just think, what is the clarity and understanding? Think of it. What is clarity and... Uh, what is clarity and understanding? The last point before we start with our uh, practice. Clarity and understanding. What is clarity? What is knowledge? When the cause and effect is clear in my head, that is known as understanding. Are you getting it? Knowledge or understanding simply means the cause and effect is clear in my head. That is knowledge, that is understanding. I feel the effect is an anxiety and the cause, if I there is a wrong cause I found, I will never get out of the anxiety. You see, a lot of people have phobias, Anxiety, 
there are 50 reasons of anxiety, medical science says, and the 51st reason, they say cause is still unknown. They are still confused. <laughs> Majority of the illnesses, I'm not criticizing, but it's a clarity. Majority of the illnesses, the last reason they gave, the reason means cause. Oh, the causes, many causes are still unknown. Causes of the cancer is still unknown. The cause of the anxiety is still unknown. Causes of the so Eastern wisdom gives you that clarity. And when you get that clarity, you know this is what, this is what, is the journey to find the real self. Let us start. Close your eyes. Eyes are closed. And being comfortable, look at the neck joint being there. Feel the sensation, comfort, and steady steadiness. Look at the shoulder joints, be there, feel the sensation, comfort, and steadiness. Move the mind on the entire body. So you feel the sensation. I will continue using the word being comfortable and carefree, but we will explore deeply the very essence of being comfortable and carefree. So if you are careful, you are a seeker. In every session, you recognize what the word has been used, what instruction has been given to you. So you are casual in listening, it is hearing, and you are alert in listening. That makes the difference. Become aware of the entire body or feel the entire body and experience the sensation, comfort, and steadiness. <clears throat> the reason we are going to the cause of being comfortable. The cause of being comfortable is that we are always comfortable. It is the mind and its attitude causes the problem. You don't pay attention. How? Being carefree. Thoughts are coming and going. Let them come and go. You will see behind every thought, behind even the so-called we we, we classify as a crazy thought. Behind that crazy thought, you are always carefree and comfortable. Existence is always comfortable. And if the existence has created us, we have to recognize that comfort comes from the existence, not from me. And it happens in rise in awareness. Now, as we discussed, that you see that attitude, the thought expresses. A particular attitude expresses a particular thought. The reference point is jealousy or hatred, duality or a conflict. That thought changes it, its entire journey in our life. And that is why the mantra is very important. Mantra. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. You may say in your mind, Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. Sarvesham. Let everyone be happy. This statement contains the answers of all the questions that we discussed today. You have to explore and contemplate and reflect. 
you ask your mind how this line contains the answers of all the questions. Peace is my essential nature. Now see, through the thought I'm passing on the knowledge, with what attitude you take it depends on you. I don't have any choice. I cannot force you. And unless you are aware how you accept that thought makes the difference. So this week you have to work on this. Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu. Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu. Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu. Let there be peace. May there be peace for all. So it is not I'm blessing anyone. I'm exploring the peace in me. And if it is the essential nature, it is the essential nature of everyone in this world. I should change my attitude, should let me express the peace everywhere in spite of the situation, condition, relations. Do you see the change in attitude? It doesn't happen in a day. When you start with commitment, it will happen. Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Let there be completeness in all. You know all religions talks about holiness, completeness. That holiness, the wholeness lies within me, behind the mind, behind that attitude. It is me. And if it is me, then it is also applicable to every living species on this earth. It gives an another answer to, in a different direction to all the seven questions that we discussed today. So you have to contemplate. You have to brood over and again and again. The more you brood, the more clarity comes. Then there is a conviction in your head. Then what happens now? You have a conviction. Yesterday, your, your attitude was different towards any relationship. But now, today, because of the conviction, your attitude changes. That is the journey of becoming a seeker. That is why this mantra is so important. Any mantra. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. Auspiciousness. Existence has given us a birth with a particular parent in a particular country, particular county, in a particular family, with the siblings or no siblings. That is the best thing can ever happen to me. Had I been born as a mosquito? <clears throat> I'm grateful to the existence. But why the existence has given me such a difficult situation? Because I, I see the problem, because problem is in my mind. I have to resolve that problem. So once I my thinking pattern goes in this way, what happens? Your attitude changes. You block all the thoughts that expresses a negative attitude. The life changes. We are going into a passive practice today. So let us remain as a passive. Passive means that you are not actually doing anything. Look at the head and the neck. Feel the sensation, relaxation and stillness. Look inside the head and neck. What we see, we feel either the sensation represents calmness and the space or emptiness is quietness. That I have to explore. 
So what is going to happen? See, let us see the challenges we have so that you can easily understand. Look at the right arm from the shoulder to the fingertips. So as you move the mind, you feel the sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Or there is other option. <clears throat> you only heard me. You did not listen to me. Why? The mind is going into another direction. It has a particular thought. So what is the way? You repeat it instantly. You move the mind again on the right arm and see that the mind flow, flows smoothlessly. That gives rise to the sensation, relaxation, stillness. So it did not happen second time. Repeat it again. Until you experience the sensation, comfort and steadiness. And then, the moment you look inside, you feel any, you pick up any sensation inside the right arm. That is the state of the calmness, and the space within is the state of quietness. The mind goes to the left arm, from the shoulder to the fingertips, same way. You need not to worry about if the challenge is posed by the mind. It is because of the attitude. Now you know. So when you recognize, you have a cognition there. You, have, you are an observer. You can resolve that problem easily. You will never com complain that you have a lot of thoughts. Why? Thought is not you. Move the mind on the, sh on the chest, belly, and the spine at the back, the middle portion of the body, starting from the shoulder to the waist, front and the back, sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Look inside the heart or inside the belly. Become aware of any sensation. Just brand it, label it, calmness. Just do it and see what happens. When you are repeating the practice, that thought with the sensation will bring you near to the state of the calmness. And that emptiness or the blankness or the darkness has to do with the sense of quietness. What is darkness? What do you see in the darkness? Nothing, no object. So we get a spark of as if it is an objectless state. That gives you a sense of quietness. We have yet to understand the deeper level. That we will, obviously, we are going to take up in the following session. So move the mind on the right leg. Sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Inside, calmness and quietness. Left leg, awareness of the left leg, sensation, comfort, and sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Inside, calmness and quietness. The entire body, you're not doing anything. That is what I mean by the passive step. There is a shift of awareness. You see, I say, look at the entire body. So your awareness shifts to the entire body and the skin. 
then there is another shift of awareness is your experience of sensation, relaxation, and stillness. There is another shift. You look inside. So it is a shift of awareness from one experience to the second, and inside you have a sensation. That is the state of the calmness followed by the state of the quietness. In that state of the quietness, you look what you look. Let us look at the, at any point in the, that is a little bit a higher step. Look at any point in the space or darkness. If you say darkness, I'm okay with it. If you say space, I'm okay with it. If you say emptiness, with it. So once you recognize, what do you do? You recognize blankness or uh, emptiness there. Okay, you recognized it. Now pick a point in that space. Pick a point in that emptiness or in that space. Did you pick a point? Yes. And then say, Shantoham. Shantoham means I am the peace. Now this thought, this thought will realize, thought will realize the peace. That is what happens in the journey of meditation also. So what happens? You, every time you look into the space, pick a point in the space, then you drop Shantuham, then there is a pause, then there is a pause or an interval, whatever you want to say, both are okay. And then you repeat the same, you again look into the space, means you you have a cognitive ability, you have recognized there is an emptiness, and then you pick a point, another cognitive. It's a very you're making the mind very subtle. You're making the mind very subtle. But why I have to make the mind very subtle to recognize the real self? It cannot be recognized by the gross mind. I'm intentionally using the word. Gross mind recognizes the physical world, people, relations. Subtle mind is takes us to a higher level of awareness. It is not that you do the practice. It is a conscious journey. You know each and every step, why we are doing every step. That is the difference between the journey with me and others. Big difference. You know everything, what we are doing and why we are doing it. Why? That is understanding. I discussed about it, cause and effect. That is understanding, that is knowledge. But if you do it subconsciously, meditation is destroyed. You make it habitually, it is destroyed. Then you do the practice even for 50 years, the chains will not come. Relaxation, yes. As long as you continue the habit, it will bring the result. But inner chains will not take place. Meditation brings the inner chains. Understand it, my friend. That is what we are doing. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti.
Shanti 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 Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand. Lift your Buddha palms, place it on your eyes. Open the eyes inside the palms. Know your experiences. Bring the hands down. We'll share our experiences. And if you have any question, you have a liberty to ask the question because I have spoken so much. So you have also the right to speak. How are you, John? Hey, Girish. Uh, I'm fine. Uh, I missed part of the meditation because of jet lag. I sort of dozed off, but okay. I'm awake now. You are awake. Repeat I'm awake. The practice. I w yeah, right. Repeat the practice with an understanding and see what happens. But you are relaxed and calm. Right. Good. How were you, Mead? I also feel relaxed and calm. Very and good. Sense of steadiness. Sense of steadiness. That is wonderful. That's a beautiful experience. Carry on, repeat the practice. How are you, Anne? Yeah, I feel very still. I didn't want to get out of the meditation. <laughs> very good. That's an excellent way to put it. Remember, 50% of that result in meditation comes from the clarity and understanding. And the rest, 50% is the practice. So both have an equal role. Because the mind is now saturated with that thought. And then you practice the meditation. That is why you see that I talk and then I give you the practice. Mm. Beautiful. How are you? Charlie. Good. Um, I, I am aware of when the thoughts come in when I'm meditating, and I'm aware of. Um, you spoke about the stalk, um, just watching, and a relaxed focus. So rather than get upset it's it's kind of watching the three lanes of traffic but i was kind of aware yeah. of it the stalk watching it come in like the thoughts come in all the time but i just sort of let them go but stay present rather than float like off somewhere beautiful you see the beautiful narration by her that you are watching that's why we all share the experiences so that we can learn from others also wonderful how are you uh Sophie. I am good, I think I dozed off. <laughs> okay. You dozed off, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But, but then I, I, I got awake and then I didn't want to come out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens. So follow this, repeat this lesson with a contemplation and reflection on these seven or eight questions that we have covered today. And continue to do the practice. The repeat practice helps us to rise in awareness. That is all for today. Thank you. We will meet again. Namaste. Okay.